I've been using a ton of different variable NDs over the past couple months. We've got the Polar Pro Helix, the Nisi True Color Swift system, and the HY Evo Flow. And now this one from Freewell, the V2 Magnetic Hybrid Filter. And all of them have their advantages and disadvantages, but I think that this one might be my favorite for a couple reasons. My name's Dustin, your video tour guide, and remember to keep your arms and legs inside your chairs at all times. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. For starters, the Freewell V2 comes in this nice little leather pouch. When you open it too, it kind of moves the step-up rings up as well, so it's easier to get them out which is kind of a nice touch. In the box, it comes with an 82 millimeter step-up ring and a metal protective cover for the back and front of the filter, which are also magnetic. The front cap has a little ring on it as well, so you could potentially attach this on your bag or camera or something like that. Also a nice little touch. And of course it comes with the filter itself and an extra little screw thing that goes on the side of the filter, which is one of the things we'll talk about later and its purpose. One thing to note is that when I received mine, the step up ring was locked inside the filter and I didn't realize it and you definitely can't put it on your lens when it's on there. So take note of that so you don't look like an idiot like me. To get it on your lens, it's as easy as just putting the step up ring on and the filter just just magnetizes to the ring and you lock it on with the little screw. Now let me talk to you about the rest of these variable NDs and why I personally like this one the best out of all of them. Full disclosure, all of these filters were sent to me and I'm very appreciative of that, but every opinion about these filters are my own. The way I'm going to compare these is first talk about each of the pros and cons as far as convenience goes and what may make them better over the other. Then I'll actually compare the quality of these compared to the Freewell version, at least quality is also kind of subjective. We'll get to it. Also, be sure to watch my other two videos on these three variable NDs, at least the part where I compare them to each other because I'm only going to compare the relevant portions to the Freewell when it comes to the quality. Starting with the Nisi True Color Swift System. It's the most traditional like screw-on filter. The number one big advantage it does have is instead of having to switch to another filter to stop down more, all you have to do is put the four stop ND on top of the one to five stop ND, and now it's a five to nine stop ND. I think that's why it's called the Swift system. It's also slightly bigger than the lens, so you can avoid any vignetting at wider focal lengths. It comes with a front cap, but doesn't come with a rear cap, so you either have to just leave it on your camera or deal with putting it in and out of the carrying case. I also think there's only a black mist filter that exists that will screw onto the front if you're into that. I could be wrong, they may have more, but I couldn't figure it out on their website. Lastly, if you want the one to nine stop version, which is what I have here, it'll set you back $309. Now let's move on to the Evo Flow. Really the coolest part about this one is that you have two options. Not only can you screw the filters on the traditional screw method, but you can get step up rings that they magnetize to. Pretty cool. They also offer a ton of different effect filters like black mist, white mist, streaks, and a bunch more. And you can even stack them on top of each other. What I will say though, is that the magnet doesn't feel very secure. I never had it come off in my testing, but just something to be aware of. The filter also isn't much bigger than the lens, so you'll probably vignette quicker at wider focal lengths. And it also doesn't include a rear cap for the filter like the Nisi, so you'll still have to deal with the same problem when taking them on and off your lenses. I also don't know if they even offer more than a one to five stop ND, or if they are doing something similar to like the Nisi's by adding a four stop ND to the front. It's a mystery. As of right now, I don't know if you can buy just the ND by itself as well. I believe that I have the video kit version, which will set you back $564 according to their Kickstarter. And that's also without the Kickstarter discount, by the way. Now, moving on to the Polar Pro Helix Maglock system. This one was my favorite before using the Freewell, and I'll tell you why in a minute. The Helix are similar to the Freewell when it comes to step-up rings. You'll have to buy and use their specific rings in order to put the ND on your lens, which with the Polar Pro, not only does it include a front and rear cap for the NDs, but you can also get caps for the step-up rings. So now you can leave the step-up rings on and have a cap 
for your lens. Seriously, I do love this and getting the ND on and off your lens is seriously extremely convenient. Literally takes like two seconds. And it's not only magnetic, but it locks as well. The ND is also slightly bigger than the lens, so wider focal lengths, I wouldn't worry too much about vignetting. You can also stack on top of the NDs as long as you use the same kind of like helix system, like Black Mist, Blue Streak, they kind of have an assortment of add-ons. However, here's why I haven't been using them as much, and this may not matter to some people, and it can apply to any filter where you leave a step up ring on and put it in your bag. So keep that in mind. There is a fix to it. But because my bag doesn't have very big slots for my lenses, it was really annoying to deal with packing all my lenses with the step up rings on. So I kind of ended up just taking them off anyways to pack them. Now, if you have a bigger bag, it's an easy fix, but just keep that in mind before you think about doing what I did. But then the biggest disadvantage to these is the price. To buy just the two to five or the six to nine, it'll cost you around $329, which is a decent price, but all in you're spending upwards of 650 to 800 if you wanna do something like what I did, which I do think is worth considering given how convenient it is to switch between the two NDs. A little side note though, the two to five one I have doesn't lock. So when I'm changing from two to five, by spinning the ND, it can actually unlock itself without me pushing the unlocking buttons. Just something to note. Let's move on to why the Freewell V2 has turned into my favorite. There's two reasons, and I'll talk about the next one in a minute. So not only does the Freewell offer kind of like a similar locking magnetic kind of system, it also comes in a three to seven stop ND. Now this is both a disadvantage and advantage. For me, it kind of feels like an advantage because a lot of the time for the stuff I shoot, I end up wanting my ND to be in that range, especially when I'm outside. I'll rarely go above seven stops and rarely go below three. So this ends up being fantastic. My Lumix camera has dual ISO. So at 640 is the lower limit and 4,000 is the top limit. So like when I was inside, I would go to the top limit at three. And then when I would go outside, I would just stop it down to seven and go back down to 640. Disadvantage though, you don't have one, two, eight, and nine stops to use. And even on the Polar Pro, it does start at two stops. So one is not even an option on there. Oh, and even when I do need to take it off, like when I go outside or it gets a bit too dark, it's got that nice front and rear protective magnetic cover. So I just put those on and slip it back into my pocket. Or maybe I should have used the little clip that's on the front. One thing to note that got a little annoying, this little locking screw, it's hard to tell when it's loose enough to pull the ND off. And I would sometimes start pulling and it, it wouldn't be loose enough. Plus I feel like these things would be really easy to lose when you're doing that. It does come with a spare or you can put it on the other side as well. So you could have two on there. So just keep that in mind. Would be nice if they could figure out a way for it to like stay attached somehow so you, you wouldn't have to worry about that. Another reason that this filter is quite attractive is the price. It's actually the most affordable, at least if you don't buy it in the kit on here because we still don't know how much this one is, at $149. So overall, I love this ND and it's probably going to become my go-to ND. But let's talk about the other thing that I think puts this ND even higher above the others. In my last video, I talked about a problem I've kind of discovered through doing these reviews on these NDs and chatting with all the brands. Basically, without getting too technical, when you screw on traditional variable NDs, they don't consist stop on your lens or a step up ring in the same spot every time, which leads to two problems. The first one is inconsistent polarization. Watch as I screw on the other filters, you'll kind of notice that the window is like changing colors. In this example, the sky wasn't blue, but it's also very noticeable when there's a blue sky. This is what I'm talking about. When you switch the different lenses, this may cause some inconsistencies that you can't really put a finger on if you're not aware of this problem and you can't really fix it in post, you can fix it by unscrewing the filter a bit so that it stays consistent, but then your filter is going to be loose on your lens. This is where the Freewell also shines. This little screw here is meant for you to be able to shift the polarization to your liking and then lock it so that it stays consistent 
across any lens you put it on. This is also an advantage that the H&Y EvoFlow has if you are using the magnetic step-up rings. You can spin it so it's in the same place across your lenses, but there's no way to lock it. So as you're going, it may just spin, which is also the advantage to being able to lock the free well exactly where you need it. Just take note where the screw is before switching it to another lens so that it stays consistent. Now, an interesting thing about the Polar Pro Helix filters is that the polarization is consistent when you spin it on your lens, but the color slightly shifts. I noticed this when I was on a shoot before I was aware of the problem. Things seemed slightly less colorful and dull when I switched it to another lens and I thought it was just the lens, but it was the filter not landing in the same spot. The step up rings I have for the Helix system do seem to stay fairly consistent on having the filter land in the same spot, but it's not flawless as you can see. To fix this, you could do the same thing and slightly unscrew the step up ring or the nice thing with color is that it's pretty easy to fix in post. But people always say, let's just fix it in post. And then when you get to post, you're like, ah, I should have just done it right the first time. Well, now you can. I don't want people to get this confused with quality of the filters because honestly, when you compare them all against each other, they all do seem to stay consistent no matter what stop they're at. They all just have slight differences in color and contrast. I also did a really quick test in terms of sharpness. I actually thought of this when I was writing the script for this video is do any of these filters affect that? and it kind of appears it does slightly. Given I am kind of pixel peeping, so I don't know if this matters at all, but when I compare them zoomed in, the Freewell seems like it's just barely clearer. This could have been a mistake I made, so just take this with a grain of salt. Oh, and last disadvantage as well with the EvoFlow is that it'll let you go too far as you stop down, introducing this ugliness, so keep that in mind. The Freewell also has some different filters you can magnetize to the front of the filter or screw on one of the step up rings like this one fourth snow mist filter. And here's a couple of shots of what it looks like. Anyways, if there's anything I want you to take away from this video, it's that everybody kind of has their own definition of what quality means when it comes to NDs. You could say that applies in a lot of different applications. I'm sure something out there exists where you can more scientifically test the quality of an ND, but I think what I covered in this video is more applicable when deciding which variable ND is best for you. For me and my use case, that's why the Freewell V2 has become kind of my favorite, but you may think differently and what the Freewell V2 has to offer may not matter to you. And one of these other filters are a better choice for you. Let me know down in the comments. If you're still here, you obviously enjoyed the video and found it helpful. So be sure to subscribe because it's free and helps the channel. Also, if you wanna pick up any of these filters, I've got links in the description, which are probably affiliate links. And that also helps out the channel. It doesn't cost you any extra. So thank you if you do that. Until the next video though, happy filming.